If I should ask you, are you walking in faith or are you walking by sight? How would you answer that? Do you walk according to the will and purpose and plan of God for your life? Are you just walking, trusting and hoping things will turn out? God wants us to walk trusting Him for every single thing. And that is, He desires that you and I walk by faith. We either walk by faith or by sight. Most people, they got to see it to believe it. I think all of us have moments in life when we want to hear God's voice or receive some definite sign from Him regarding a relationship, perhaps a pending marriage, a business decision, a career choice, uh, or a major expenditure. You know, our decisions really matter. We make decisions, our decisions turn around and make us. And we face so many questions throughout all of our lifetime, like, how about, should I get married? If the answer is yes, who should I marry? Should I go to college? I've got a good job. Should I take the new job? Should I just hold on to the one I have? Is there any way to be 100% certain about God's will when you're making a major choice in life or a college? But remember, we walk by faith not my sight. And I want to say to you, you are not going to get 100% assurance and confidence before you make a choice because it would require zero faith. We pray about it, we wait on the Lord, and then we make our choice. We believe what we don't see. That's what faith is. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Once you see, then you don't need faith anymore. Faith means you have it in your heart before you have it in your circumstance. But it really can be just as good as having it if you really trust and believe God. You have to take the plunge. You have to make the choice. Go ahead and make the best decision you can make. And when you've done that, leave the results to God because God's purpose will stand. And if yours are not, he will correct it, he will redeem it, and he will still keep you on the right path to your future destiny and will not forsake you. He wants you to know his will more than you want to know it. And I think one of the reasons that people live out of the will of God is they're not willing to take the first step. God will say something, and God will speak to them. People say, and I hear people tell me this all the time, well, God doesn't speak to me. Yes, he does. You may not be listening, but he does. God doesn't play favorites. He loves us all. But sometimes he'll require of us something that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If I'm going to follow the Lord, I've got to be willing to listen to him, and I've got to be willing to trust him when I don't understand it. You may have some things you don't understand. You can't figure out. You don't see the answer. That's okay. You don't have to see it. This is a key to faith, trusting when you don't understand, trusting when you don't have the answers, trusting when it seems like just the opposite of what you were hoping for. Quit worrying about those things you can't figure out. God has you in the palm of his hand. I know not how this is going to work out, but I do know who's on the throne. I do know who's directing our steps. I do know who's planned out our days. Before you were ever born, God pondered plans he had for you. Before there was even a single day to your existence. And he established your purpose before you were ever created in your mother's womb. They were actually recorded or written in his book. God has plans for me. Jeremiah 29, verse 11, the New Living Translation reads, God says, for I know the plans. I know them. I know the plans, plural. So he must have some plans, plural ones. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and to give you a hope. So God has great plans for you. He promises that his plans for your destiny 
are only good ones. No disasters are planned for you by God. He hasn't written down on this occasion when they're 35, 40 years old, I'm going to get them. None of that. No, his plans are only good and they're only filled with grace and hope. You're not God. He is. I think that is really comforting to know. You know, there is a God and it ain't me. And I'm, that's why I'm hanging on to him and trusting him. I think what happens is that we forget that he is in control of the life I gave him. I do want to make good choices, but I'm a limited human being. I can't see the future, but I can, I've got scripture, I've got prayer, I've got wise people, and then you've got a peace in your heart, and at the end of the day, I have to do that and trust God. And I have to believe, regardless of what happens, he will orchestrate my life, and I'll end up where I'm supposed to be, doing what I'm supposed to do. I don't have to obsess, hyperventilate, or control everyone and everything around me. I don't have to worry about the minutia, the little miniature things of life. I can have confidence that this God is going to take care of everything. You know, you can sleep well once you realize God's in control of your life. I don't like everything. I don't understand everything, just like you, but I do know he's in control. And I know no human being energized by Satan, not even Satan himself, can stop the purpose of God for your life or mine. And, and here's what I've noticed. Even if you trust God and make a mistake, if you genuinely make a mistake, God has the most awesome ways of correcting that mistake. He knows your heart. He knows you're willing to do what He requires of you. And God knows better than we do that some things He requires of us is very difficult. But the question is, are you listening? And secondly, are you trusting that whatever He says for you to do, that you're to do? Abraham, and I'm glad this is in the Bible, he made some wrong choices. But God didn't stop blessing him. And he didn't cast him aside. Listen, before God ever created anything in this life, he knew that his finest children would make mistakes. They would sin against him. They would disobey him. Because living in the world in which you and I live in, that we, we make mistakes. The times of weakness, the times of failure. And God forgives and He keeps moving us. He can put you exactly where He wants you to be. He can arrange all the details of your life years in advance. He can open doors that seem shut tight. He can remove any obstacle that stands in your way. He can take your choices and fit them into His plan so you end up at the right place at the right time. He can even take your mistakes and bring good out of them. Don't forget, he's our redeemer. He redeems things. He can take tragedy and use it for your good and his glory. All he needs is a willing heart, just someone to reasonably cooperate. This doesn't mean you won't have to make difficult and hard choices. You will, but it takes the pressure off because it means you can trust God to take your decisions, your choices, and use them to accomplish his will in your life. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. The steps of a good man are ordered or directed by the Lord. Even when you don't know what the heck's going on, He's directing them. Lay your head on your pillow knowing Dad's up, He's in charge, and He's going to govern the affairs of your life. If He shuts the door and opens the door, He's just directing you. It's going to be all right. God loves you so much, and He's got such a great, blessed, wonderful life for you. Hear me, God has plans for you. They're awesome plans. You have not maxed out your potential.